Can our heroes stop Murloc's dastardly plot? Can they save the Sunstone and the royal family? Find out this month on D and D minus. All right, you are standing outside the cell you've recently escaped from. Papa is by your side with his golden crown. What do you do? Get a coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Flash cut over to a Starbucks. Do you guys have oat milk? You don't have oat milk? Okay, no problem. You mean, wait, wait, wait. You mean a Starbucks? <laughs> oh, how dare you? <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, now we actually have to go get caught. Yeah, exactly. well, we can wait until after the fight. You oh, know, is that like yeah. Star Clucks, but like yours is <laughs> yeah, better? Star Clucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have anything we can set up in advance before the fight or no? Like spells or anything like that? Uh, I mean, I could do see. spells before we got there, but I don't think it would be helpful. Yeah, we're not really like, we're not buff spell people, are we? Speak for yourself. I'm, pu- I'm pretty buff. No, 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 I mean, like you can't like, Put a half damage. Or Flash like, cut to you guys doing steroids in a gym <laughs> bathroom. <laughs> or we could go with our feet. We could go with our feet. Yeah, right we now. could go. We should talk about it a little longer. We should discuss. <laughs> which... There's an explosion above your head. <laughs> oh, oh, no, oh, oh, damn it. Oh. Vampire the masquerade it is. <laughs> I'm, ca- I'm casting haste on the way down, though, damn it. <laughs> How every Telltale game should end. <laughs> Thank you, Morgan. Played them, you. played them all. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to start running up the stairs and just hope that people follow me. All right. <laughs> you burst through the doors of the throne room and find Claw's father, the king, mid-raising what you know to be a fireball gem to the tip of his magical staff, you assume, to perform some kind of magic spell with it. Command. Command. Interesting. On the king. On the king. We could just talk to him. Father, wait. I could throw a javelin or a snorkel or like whichever goes better. <laughs> I'm going to cast command. Okay. I'm also going to try and stop him. I don't know if that's a roll or not. Yeah. Do me a favor. Both of you roll a quick initiative roll for me. Just roll straight oh, D20s yeah, sure. for who does what first. Because I, I don't want Claw to be like, Father, stop. And you're in the middle of being oh, like. You know what, Claw? <laughs> you go right ahead. <laughs> You go right ahead. I rolled a three. I rolled a four plus four. All right. Well, Claw, we will let, we'll let you speak before Bridget casts a spell on your dad first. I rolled a 19. You was, you wasted a 19 on that. I would describe my initiative as like 95% right now. <laughs> Honestly, the comedy gods want me to let Dave do whatever he wants to do first. <laughs> but I'm going to let Claw go first here. I'm going to let Claw go first. Okay. I'm going to say, Father, wait. Murloc is only marrying Nitten for your throne. Also, that's a bomb. Kind of thought you were going to lead with the bomb thing, but okay, no, you, got, you got all the information no, out there. No, I don't want to freak that's the good. whole room out. No, yeah, yeah, you yeah. just start with the bomb next time, just burying the headline. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Sorry. He, he pauses like halfway to the staff, and Papa stands up next to you and says, It's true, your majesty. Murloc had me in a thrall for months now, but I'm back, and I got the crown to prove it. And he points at the golden crown above his head. And the, the king sort of looks very uncomfortable as he stares at the crown. And he says, but if he were lying, he would lose the crown because the crown is part of his powers. Mur- Mur- Murloc? And there's a pause. And Murloc says, God damn it. And as he does, <laughs> psychic energy blasts from him, knocking everyone in the room to the ground where they are held there by like a white, powerful, lightning-esque force. Wow. And he cracks his knuckles and turns to you all and says, I guess I'll have to murder you all the old-fashioned way. Everybody, roll initiative for me. <sighs> okay. God damn it! Oof. Two again! <laughs> Oof. You hate to see I got it. A six. Two plus one. Six plus four. I have very slow dice. 
Why my do God. you have such slow dice? I don't know. Yeah, why do you have such slow dice, man? What are you using your internet for? Nothing. You're not using it for something else. What? Are you using a laptop? Yes. For some reason, when I use my laptop, the dice roll really, really, really slowly. I'm on a laptop. I'm using... I'm on a laptop. This only became a problem for my specific laptop kind of recently, like the last mm. two or three episodes. So it's, mm, it's not all the, the porn you watch. It, I can't imagine it's a coding difference between desktop and laptop, if that's what you're suggesting. I think that's what it is. No, I'm thinking it's a, I think it's a RAM thing, not a coding thing. You don't have the RAM for the dice. Yeah, yeah, you need to get a sheet. Okay, but I did have on the same device the RAM to do it recently. Yeah. What did you download? Did you download yeah. a bunch of games? Not how RAM works. Bunch of porn? I got a four. <laughs> you got a four. It's true. <laughs> All right. And Murloc is up first. That psychic energy that he blasted out that trapped everyone on the floor of the courtroom, it blasts out towards you as well. That's what he's going to use this turn. Everybody make an intelligence saving throw for me. Oh, balls. Tell you what you got to hit. Tell you what you got to hit. Got to hit a 15. Oh, this Ooh. is not good. Oh, that was not a 15. Nope. 13. It's okay. I got an 18 <laughs> with a... Um... Nice. Okay, there nice. we go. Excellent. Why do I have minus one intelligence? <laughs> I mean... I, I mean, you've been playing it. Great for that. <laughs> Listen to the podcast. I'm a goddamn dragon. <laughs> Dragons are smart. I've also got one minus one intelligence, but I got plus three wisdom. Street smarts. That's what that is. I'm a very stable genius. I went to an Ivy League school. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Snedrick, you are the only one who saves. So everyone take 19 damage. Jeez. Jeez. Fucking shit. Who didn't save? Did I save? I had a six. Uh, no. You did not save. <laughs> no, Snedrick's the only one who saved. So take 19 damage and you are stunned for one minute. Mm -hmm. A stunned creature is incapacitated, can't move, and can speak only falteringly. You automatically fail strength and dexterity saving throws and attack rolls against you have advantage. Well, we are going to die. I really hurt. I can't, I can't even explain what's happening to me. Oh, you're speaking falteringly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh man, he's doing a thing and the internet's cutting out. Oh. <laughs> did, uh, did Papa pass? Oh, that is a great question because I don't think he actually rolled. Let me see. Yes. Yeah. He rolled a natural 20. So, I mean, I was I was pretty confident I could take this guy out by myself, but that's <laughs> it's nice to have some help. Yeah, you know. the wave of white lightning that crackles over all of you, crackles over him and it just it just sort of like bounces off the crown glows gold and just like, nothing happens. Really? Fuck you. <laughs> At the end of each of your turns, you do get to try that save again though. So, just keep that in mind and Papa is up next. So Papa is going to kneel down because you fell down right next to him. And he is going to use his cleansing touch on the two people closest to him. So he's going to use that on Bridget and Dave, who are standing by his side. Boo. Fuck yeah. I'm the prince. I, <laughs> he should be me. It's fine. That's true. Sorry, he would I absolutely, said, definitely save the oh, prince. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. So Claw. Yeah, absolutely. Claw and Dave. Bridget, you're still... <laughs> Motherfucker, we're <laughs> fucked. Should have been royalty. Yep. But yeah, you are now free of that spell. And that is his turn. This is my literal hell. Wait, do we get healed? You are not healed. No, you're just no longer stunned. All right. Next up is Claw. Oh, shit. Okay. I'm going to do the unarmed strike, flurry of blows, the whole thing. So you're just running up to Murloc to hit him. All right. Let's find out now if physical damage works. <laughs> do it. <laughs> so I'm going to do two unarmed strikes as my two attacks, and then I'm going to do flurry of blows as my bonus action, which would be two more unarmed strikes. Nice. Roll those attack rolls for me. Uh, 11, 24. Woo! That'll hit. 17. That'll hit. Uh, 12. That will not. Okay. Two hits. Nine. Oh, and five. 14 damage. Nothing to sneeze at. So you walk up and you boom, boom, punch Murloc right in the face. Just a, a double cross across the face. And he, he does that cool badass villain thing where he like wipes the single line of blood off of his mouth and goes, oh, that's how it's going to be, is it? Doesn't he have like tentacles for mouth? Yeah. 
So he uses one tentacle to reach up and, <laughs> and do it. <laughs> Which, which is pretty silly looking it's now that I think creepy. about it. Yeah. That's, yeah. Really, <laughs> all right. that's really funny. So now, just to be clear, you are standing right next to Murloc Gnomes right in front of him because you ran from people who were facing him. Mm -hmm. So your back is to your party. You are facing Murloc Gnomes right next to him. On that note, Snedrick, it is your turn. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Thank you for that, by the way, Claw, for <laughs> making sure that all but one of my attacks is useless before you... Uh, yeah, we're not planned well as a party. <laughs> well, I mean, some of us are. <laughs> well, yeah, I just, I have no long range stuff, so I'm, I just kind of have to And I have no short range stuff, yeah. so, so, all right. Well, so, Eli, you see that big vase that's behind Murloc Gnomes? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. It's 20. I see it. I see it, Snedrick. Okay, well, there you go. So, it's, it's two to I one. I see it. Three to one. <laughs> So I'm making it easy on you, but there is something in this room that weighs between one and five pounds is, and is not being worn or carried. I'd say that vase is like a perfect example of what you're right. describing. Right, I would think that's probably about yeah. 4.75 pounds or so. Ballpark, yeah. It's beautiful, For well sure. aware. It is, yeah. The, yeah, it's the urn that has Claw's mom in it. <laughs> <laughs> fuck the fuck yeah, it is. The king keeps it by the throne. <laughs> so I'm going to cast Catapult with a third level spell slot so I can choose one object I can throw it up to 90 feet in the direction that I choose so I'm going to throw it right at the back of Murloc's head he's going to make a dexterity saving throw if he misses then he takes 5d8 damage alright yeah. what's he got to hit well it doesn't matter because he's going to hit a 4 because I have a fucking portent alright yeah roll that damage oh that's a lot of damage 30 30 yeah. damage Ooh, fuck what? yeah a four, six, seven, eight, and five. Everything up there, everything Blam. that four is a, yeah, fuck yeah, man. Wow. Oh, 30 gorgeous. damage. Fuck. You've been gorgeous. waiting for that roll. So many like, ah, oh, this didn't work. Oh, this was Wait, I mean, I got an eight, seven, six, five, and four. That's like, I got the fuck five yeah. highest numbers. <laughs> this, this was the payoff. The only way that just dealt 70 damage is like the urn shatters open and the soul of Claw's mom that's been trapped inside, <laughs> like, spiritual fangs like dig in them. <laughs> he's like holy shit I bet there's a whole backstory there fuck god <laughs> we should probably all talk that through later right you say trapped as if we like trapped her <laughs> yeah I want to know what the fuck was going on there ow that really hurt Damn your right, mom has dude. bird fangs that's interesting <laughs> right hey <laughs> You don't expect hey. to hear fang you fangs on a bird is not normal. Yeah, do That's I like have fangs? We should talk about unorthodox. It. Look, oh. this is very much <laughs> unorthodox. This is very much a boss fight. But if you guys would like to take a pause so we can figure out what the <laughs> fuck that just was, <laughs> I would like to discuss this because right? that's crazy. Marble Claw? team up style. I obviously already know, right? Because it's my mom. Yep. But yeah, what the fuck's up with your dead mom? What's going on there? Uh, we, we don't have to talk about it. You know, it's all family in the room. It'd probably just get weird. Could you describe her physically? Just to us? Bird. Bird? Tall bird. <laughs> All right. Dave, before you try to have sex with Claw's mom, you are up next. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it was clear that that's what was happening. That's very clear. It's clear to our audience. Shouldn't have said tall. Shouldn't have said tall. Yeah, I walked into that. I don't think it was clear that that wasn't <laughs> happening either, but I don't think it was clear that it was happening. <laughs> but it's my turn before I fuck his mom. Is that what you said? Yeah. I mean, you could use your turn to try and fuck the ghost that just sank its fangs into <laughs> Are you on God? I mean, technically, I'm on Murloc's side right now. <laughs> That's fair. Okay, noted. Okay, quick description of the uh, geometry of the situation we're in. We're in the palace room, the throne room. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How big's the room? Uh, seventy-five square feet. Okay. <laughs> He's learned his lesson. Well, it's pretty small. That's pretty uh, damn small. Yeah. <laughs> I think all. he means seventy-five yeah, feet but square. It's not seventy-five thousand square, square feet. That's not <laughs> nope. million. No nope. million. Okay. Hey, Eli, go with fifty-six hundred, man. That's I think what I think that's what you're looking for. You're going for seventy-five feet by seventy-five feet, right? That, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I am fifty-six hundred. Thousand twenty five <laughs> square feet. Yeah. Yep. We're okay. in six flags. Got it. Got it. And how close are we to the Murloc guy right now? I'm right next to He's him. He's right next to him. Mm -hmm. You guys are, I'm gonna say so Claw's speed is forty feet, so I'm gonna say you are forty feet away. Okay. Got it. Claw, you feeling uh, lucky over there for uh, like dodging some shit? 
if I do some shit? Absolutely. Would it be us if I didn't? I'm just going to remind you of something. There are unconscious royalty and people <laughs> all around him on the ground. Claude, how much do you care about those do people? It. Do it. <laughs> Nate, I not dare a lot. You. These are all your like relatives. You're fine? Yeah. You're fine them. with whatever I'm about to do. Do it. I think this awesome. is the first time you've asked anything like that. Because think about it like this. If they die, I'm king. Okay, so just everybody heard the like, I'm allowed to do whatever I want thing to these people. That's what that's what he said just now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Witness. Okay. One of the guards on the floor just like raises his hand and does a thumbs down gesture. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I slap his hand out of the way and then. Uh, oh, no. He's, thing. he's 40 feet away. He's just I run over there. Upset. Okay. I create, I create a match. That's your action. Great. Nope. All no, right. Not. Bridget, you are not. <laughs> Bonus action. I slap his hand. I mentally, I say, hands down, please. Hands down, everybody. You're allowed to talk, right? <laughs> no questions? Thank you. I will do fireball. Okay, so just to be clear, this was literally the spell Murloc was just oh about God. to use to kill all of these people. I quit the podcast. So what happened, Just I just want to put this image in your mind, right? Do what you got to do. Murloc Gnomes was like, I'm an evil bad guy and I'm going to use this stick of dynamite to kill the <laughs> king and everyone in the courtroom. And you're about to throw a stick of dynamite at the <laughs> king and everyone in the courtroom. Can I tell everybody to move back? <laughs> no, because they're stuck to the ground with magic. God damn it. You could tell him. Talking's a free action. What's the worst that happens if some of these people die? The entire <laughs> die? city burns down well and like the plane dies too and right? the plane dies uh, we don't get the thing we all die wait wait, wait. who's who's specifically death would trigger a magical event no he's saying you'd blow up the sunstone i mean no one's you wouldn't blow up the sunstone the sunstone's oh. a pretty powerful magical object you would murder the king nitin and a bunch of the like guards and court people who were around right all right, you got, I mean, like, you got to crack some eggs to make an omelet, right? You know? <laughs> Sorry for the slur, the bird face. I was going to say, you very, un, yeah. very unpopular expression in Haricot. Let me tell you. <laughs> Do you guys, you guys know what I meant, though? Like, I, 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 eggs feel, too. Like they're, I feel like they're pro-choice there. So they probably are okay. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, I'm, we're also an egg-laying people. I get, I like, I, we're, it's weird. We're all... Do you have like an ice spell? Do I have an ice spell? I have an ice spell that I can throw while he's throwing his fire spell, and then we can negate each <laughs> and other. Just be nothing. Eldritch fucking a wa a blast! Water. <laughs> it's called Eldritch blast. It only hits the one fucking person, and you don't even have to burn one of your fucking two goddamn spell slots for it. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was all. Uh, 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 I mean, <laughs> I coughed. Uh, Eldritch. Blast. I'm going to take you out my blunderbuss. There you fucking go. Cool. Cunt. <laughs> also explosive ammo. Just a reminder. I'll do the Eldritch Blast. Fine. <laughs> it's just, it's so boring. I know. You have so many spells. I just looked at all of them. Fireball's the best one for sure. Yeah, because it's an explosion. Yeah, it's awesome. If you want, I'll try and move him next time. And maybe I'll plant like a grease grenade and then you can fireball him. Nice. I hit him 30 damage worth of an urn and the dude didn't even fucking budge. So I don't know what you're going to do, but good luck on the throw. I've got like monk stuff, hopefully that maybe can move him or something. Let me you're going to move him with monk stuff. Okay, noted. <laughs> I'm going to Eldritch blast this guy. Roll it, baby. Yeah. All right. 23. Yeah. That'll hit. Ooh. Roll that damage, baby. Boom. That's seven. Seven damage. Well done. I mean, it's no earn, but you know. All right, Bridget, you are up next. All right. I would like to cast Spirit Guardians, please. Ooh, are these your fairy friends? These are my fairy Barker gang. Yeah. Fantastic. Wait, no, I'm going to actually go up to him on the side, but like 15 feet away from Murloc but kind of on the side so that there's still space for people to get like Snedrick to get a full blast at him without hitting me. Which side? The right or left. Which side is, is further away from Snedrick? So you are 15 feet away on the left-hand side. Perfect. Great. Good stuff. And as a bonus action. Love it. <laughs> I will be a casting the spiritual Summon weapon. The yes. 
I can I get up. When I cast the spell, you can make a melee spell attack against a creature within five feet of the weapon. So I'm going to cast it right on top of his fucking head. All right. And I am rolling like shit today. <laughs> That's an eight. Yeah, that'll miss. That's a two plus six. All right. It is Murloc's turn, which means he needs to fight off these fairies, right? Aye. What does he got to do? Saving throw? He's got a beat of 14. Wisdom? Mm-hmm. That's a seven. So, Aye, yeah. so he's full he didn't damage. seem very wise. Yeah, roll that damage. I will. And that's five damage. Every little bit counts. Five damage. So these fairies go flitting by, you know, slap, 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 slap. <laughs> he looks around at all of you and he says, I've decided I don't feel like getting hit by any of you today. And he sort of flexes his hands and this magical shield appears around him. Fuck. Like he's wearing this light blue armor, if you will. Oy. All right. Papa is up next. He says, let's get everybody back into fight and shape. Oh, he's got to heal all the spells. Mm -hmm. like. And he claps his hands together and there's a glow from the crown and the warmth of the crown passes over all of you and you all heal by five points of damage. Nice. Every little bit counts. Yeah. Thank mm. you. I really want to see him attack. I want to see him like get fucking going. It's like the clothes right out of the dryer. You know when you take <laughs> some clothes out of the dryer? It's like a very small version of that. That healing glow sort of casts over all of you and he goes, and the fun part is that was just my bonus action. And then he like runs past you, Claw, grabs Murloc by the top of his like squid head and just hurls him behind him like 16 feet and Murloc just like slams into the ground behind him and he's like, oh, that felt good. I wanted to do that for a really, really long time. Okay, can we tell if he got hurt by that? Yes. Like, he's got the, okay. A little bit more blood around the tentacle mouth. Mm -hmm. Claw, you are up next. Okay, I'm going to do a stunning strike. Ooh. Delicious. All right, here comes the quarterstaff hit. 22. Ooh, ooh. That'll miss. What? Mm -hmm. What? Wait, what? You bring your quarterstaff down. It taps off of the blue armor that surrounds oh, him. Oh, yeah. All yep. right. Yeah. If this is anything like that queen we fought, then it's probably magic is the only thing that it's going to get through it. Mm -hmm. uh, does that cost the key point? No, because you, okay. you didn't hit him, so you didn't spend the key point. Okay, cool. Uh, you get two attacks, though. So I do. So I'm going to do another one. I'm going to try and do another stunning strike with a quarter staff. Roll it. Come on, 20. Nope, lower, 19. Nah. Cool, I'm done. All right. <laughs> oh. So ping, ping. Oh, actually, I'm going to do one more key point. I'm going to do patient defense. Nice. Ooh. All right. Hopefully he comes after me. Snedrick, you are up next. All right. So after this throw, is he within five feet of other people still? No, he is not. Really? I think he would be within me, uh, well, right? That, that be, that no, because, <laughs> no, I just did it. I just drew it oh, on my right, paper. You're right, you're right, you're right. I had you run at an angle to the left. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Angle for the win. Graph paper for the win, everybody. How would you run it not an angle to the left? <laughs> so, <laughs> Floating midair, idiot. Right, there you nope. go. <laughs> Seems so stupid. You're lucky I'm editing that That's out. an angle. I'm, I'm going to whip the wand seven parts out like Old West style, spin it around my finger one time. Mm -hmm. Baller. And I'm going to cast Snillox Snowball Swarm oh. and see if that works against his shit. That was a sweet finger spin you just did, Th by the way. Thank you. Aye. A flurry of magic snowballs erupts from a point you choose within range. I'm going to choose, like, you know, where he is. Each creature at a five foot radius sphere centered on that point must make a dexterity saving throw. A creature takes 3d6 cold damage on a failed save or half as much on a successful save, but I'm casting it. With a third level spell slot, so that would be 4d6 damage. All right. He's going to make a, a dexterity saving throw, yeah? Yes. All right. And he gets to make that with advantage. What's he need? 14. 14. Okay, so that's a 13 and a 5. So he will take yeah. that damage. Fuck yeah. And he'll take full damage. He's going to take damage come hell or high water. 17. 
17 Man. damage. All oh, right. Yeah. So he Cedric's gets killing it. He gets football tossed by Papa, lands on the ground, and then these snowballs just erupt out of the floor underneath him. <laughs> right up his ass. I'm going to go right up his ass. Oh, oh, wow. Oh, so it's not like a flurry. It's Ooh. just like one pounding Ooh. snowball form right, right into the butthole. <laughs> Well, it's just a series going. No, it's just five foot radius. I can't. I'd. He turns around and there's just like a bunch of tentacles down there. They're all holding a snowball now. And he's like, hur, hur. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah. Dave, you're up. I'm going to cast the fireball. Cool. And I have a plan for this. I like it. Oh, boy. He has a plan. I'm already in. So you said we're not next to him right now. That's correct. No, nobody is next to him right now. All right. I'm going to cast Fireball. Bridget is, sorry, I'm going to check. Bridget is the closest. Oh, no, Claw, you're right next to him because you just tried to punch him. I was hoping you wouldn't remember that. I did remember that. Claw is right next to him. Claw, I have a plan. You can go for it. Nice. Here's what I'm doing. I aim this thing up nice and high, like 20 feet, 19 feet above this guy's, right above his head. A 20-foot radius sphere of fire happens but pretty much his head is the only thing that's caught yeah. in anything close to him. That's great because Claw, we have already determined, is shorter than him. And he's very so short. So it's just yeah. going to be a fireball that <laughs> just gets his head, right? While, Correct. While Claw ducks underneath and like feels the toasty warmth. You get it. He doesn't even have to duck. He doesn't even oh, have to duck. Oh, that's great. Also, I have like the dodge action going right now, so I could probably avoid it anyways. So Yeah. Don't even have to. Doesn't matter. Don't, don't even have to. I have to. a whole geometry plan that worked out apparently, All which right. it never does. <laughs> Okay. What does that need to be? A <laughs> dexterity saving throw? Yeah. Uh, Murloc has to do a dexterity saving throw. A 15. All right. It's a one, but he does have advantage. <laughs> Why does he have advantage? Because he has magic resistance. Does he? Yep. Are you sure? Positive. He had advantage against my thing. Mm -hmm. Didn't he run out of advantage? And <laughs> a 13. That's not going to do it. Boom. Yeah. Give me that damage. Ooh. He's going to take some damage. It's going to take several minutes for this to happen. <laughs> if anyone wants to go out and grab a sandwich, right? <laughs> there are eight dice very slowly rolling across my screen right now. <laughs> 33 damage. Ooh, yeah. 33 damage. 33. So again, just to paint a picture, he gets football thrown. The snowballs all pound into his butt. Then a fireball just incinerates his head a la Daffy Duck, right? It's like the two blinking eyes and then the ashes fall down. Amazing. I feel like his tentacle beak is all turned around, too. Yes, exactly. Heath, exactly. The tentacles are on the back side of his head. Yeah, he has to turn exactly. them around. <laughs> yeah. Hey, everybody, just jumping in to thank you once again for listening to the show. You love listening to it. We love making it. I'm going to go real quick this week because you got a lot of show to get to. I wanted to thank everyone who's left us a review on all the places that you can get podcasts. They really do help the show. They help new people find out about it. It boosts us up in the rankings. And it's just nice to hear that you're enjoying the podcast. Even more than that, People who donate over at patreon.com forward slash DND minus, all spelled out. You can give us as little as a dollar and you'll get behind the scenes bonus extras. We played a short game called Lasers and Feelings called The Worst and the Dimmest. You can get that when you give us some money over at patreon.com forward slash DND minus. Other than that, oh, it's June, so which means that Matreon is over. Thank you to all of you who supported us in our yearly fundraiser. For Matreon, I don't know how much we made yet because I am recording this in May because it comes out in June, but I'm sure it was a lot and I'm sure we're great. We are. I'm definitely, we're definitely very, very grateful. All right. I think that's it. Enjoy the rest of the show. All right, Bridget, you are up. Okay. I'm not going to do that. Damn. All right, I'm going to uh, shatter him. Yeah. Aye, shatter. Ten foot radius. I, all right, I can do this. There's a place right in front of Murloc where I can get 
Him in a 10 foot radius, but not claw. I a fucking D&D as done by geometry teachers. I just want you guys <laughs> to know, in order to keep track of spell radiuses and stuff, what I've been doing on my graph paper for this week is drawing circles that make up the radiuses. And he's just at the center of so many fucking <laughs> circles. Right, It looks like a David Icke illustration. Right? <laughs> David Icke's about to tell me that like Murloc Gnomes is the Jewish God and we all need to tune in. <laughs> well, I think it's possible. So it's I'm definitely possible. That. I have a circle for it. I I'm going to do that, and then I'm instead of uh, since it is oh, you can go over his head too. Again, you can do the overhead thing, uh, but it's a cylinder. Yeah, that's a, no like it a ten foot radius sphere centered on oh sphere. Okay, I could do over his head. Why don't I do a, it's short? I, anyway, it's going to have him and not ever anybody else. So shatter his fucking face. He's got to do a constitution saving throw. He got to beat a 14. Constitution saving throw. He has advantage on this as well. That's a 19. Oh, well, fuck. Does he take any damage? Yeah, it is half that damage. Okay, well, that's going to be half of, oh, fuck, that was a good roll too. Uh, 10 damage. 10 damage, nothing to cheat. So again, thrown, burnt. Fine, and then there's a big smashing sound. Look, it's just, it is tough to be Murloc Gnomes at this particular time. <laughs> hey. Bonus actions, anything. Oh, yeah, I'm going to get him with my spiritual weapon. It's going to move over toward his head again, and then it's going to be like, bloop. So that would be, oh, I got to do it to, to hit, sorry. <laughs> Duh. It's going to float over to his head, and then <laughs> that's, uh, oh, oh, excellent. That's a 24 to hit. Yeah. Oh, that'll hit. And that'll be, that's seven. I'm sorry. I just, I can't get over the cartoonish nature of this boss fight. Finally, you've gotten him with the sprayer thing, like a Marx Brothers cartoon, right? He's just been <laughs> sprayed with the seltzer. It's a creeping keg. It's like an <laughs> old Hanna-Barbera cartoon. Right, we exactly. need to pie him in the face. We, we have to pie him in the face. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we need a pie spell. We really Does somebody a have spell. a pie thing? I don't know. If only someone had... A robe of bread summoning. Oh, how dare you? How dare you? I would you? like to summon a pie from the bread. Some bread pie. Bread pudding. Gotta wait for your oh, turn. Bread God. pie cake. Thank God it's not your turn. I'm going to do that when it's my turn, everybody. <laughs> yeah, I had a feeling. All right. Uh, Murloc is not looking good. And he is going to say, enough of this foolishness. And the fairies are gonna. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's a good, it's a good roll whenever you're ready. Yeah. That is going to be a 17. He will make that. Ah, oh, balls. Well, then he's going to get, what is it, seven? Seven damage. Seven damage. I love the idea. He stands up for a bad guy monologue, right? He stands up <laughs> to be like, that's quite enough of zap, 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 zap. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, and one of those fairies is in a van. Really yeah, thought I would get to do more. I, yep. uh, what were you saying? You were doing banter? I, was, you, I thought you had I some was banter. I hoping I would get to do a lot more banter during yep. this. Let me say. You guys blew me up. Fucking sucks. It was like cold and then hot. That was it. it, hurt. it makes and it then hurt cold extra. again. You ever have really cold toes and then you take a hot shower? <laughs> the worst. <laughs> All right. You know what he's going to do? He's actually going to say, you know, the problem is you can't hit. What you can't see. And he snaps his fingers <sighs> and turns invisible. Okay. I have a lot of, like, none of my spells say that you have to be able to see the guy. Right. <laughs> but then he, <laughs> and then he moves. But you don't know where. A bunch of mine actually do say you have to see the move, <laughs> touch the guy or see him. How do we know he moves, though? Because I, I said he moved. The only way you know. <laughs> I suppose you don't know he moves. So, yeah. So maybe he doesn't move. God is like, he moved. He moved. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, you hear it. You hear him because he's a tentacle face. It's just like very obvious where he is. It's like, blah, 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 blah. no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Wait, so we don't hear that or we do? No, you don't. I'm, I'm we don't. Okay. Being silly. <laughs> I like, I like that we hear. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, like a. Uh, I like it more of a Zoid, like an evil yeah. Zoidberg. Yeah, oh. I was hearing Zoidberg for sure. <laughs> Blue Zoidberg from the alternate universe, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Papa is going to run to you, Claw, and sort of slap you in the center of your chest. And how much healing do you need? Uh, 14. Okay. He's going to heal you for 14. Okay. He gets to choose? Yeah. Cool. For him. 
And that'll be Papa's turn. Oh. Hmm. Felt like you'd do a little bit where you're like a magical paladin that does a lot of stuff. I can't <laughs> see him. That, that was it. A <laughs> lot of his, a lot of my stuff is punch involved. A lot of, of sight based. A lot of yeah, stabbing, okay. shooting, you know, magic. Could you just like take a guess and try a punch at something? Oh, area? you think I should just randomly swing my sword in a direction? What's the worst yeah. that happens? All right, you know what? That's you can a good see idea. all the rest of us, right? And he just cuts off Murloc's head. Well, now I feel like an asshole. See? <laughs> <laughs> you guys want to do tacos for lunch? I have been feeling tacos all week. I would love a taco. None of that happened. None of that happens. All right. I'm going to summon my ass wolf. All nice. right. Roll for those ass wolves for me. Uh, yeah. It's one D. Four plus one. Mm -hmm. So I am going to summon three wolves. Three wolves. Nice. And I'm going to uh, tell them to go to, to smell him out and bite him on the ass. Nice. I'm so proud of myself. I pre-rolled initiatives for the wolves because I, I, I pre-rolled initiatives for everything you guys are able to summon because I always forget <laughs> to and then I have to add them in. Mm -hmm. So there's like 17 different creatures that probably won't <laughs> exist in the initiative order. So sorry. One. Two, three wolves, and then this one didn't happen. And where's Carl? This one didn't happen. He's up there. Carl's in a different dimension right now. He's in a I different dimension right now. Complaining bitterly to Gladys. Yeah. I rolled a 20. All right. So, yeah, those wolves will act on their initiative. So, once it gets around to their initiative, we'll know where he is based on where they're biting. Mm -hmm. Dave, you are up. A wolf can smell a fucking murloc. There's no way <laughs> a wolf doesn't smell a murloc. That's, that's, Canonically true. All right. It is my turn. I am going to... Start blasting. Summon Carl. Summon Carl. I'm going to summon Carl the Pug Pegacorn. Yeah! Yes, the chain on your wrist glows gold. Carl the Pug Pegacorn appears at your side. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> hey, Carl. Oh, what's going the on? wolves are here. Yeah, no, the wolves are here. Fellas, and... how's it going? How's it going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. you guys all say hi. Mm -hmm. yep. Give you a second. You're going to do like sniff asses or whatever. How do you, how do you gonna, Christine? I, gonna Christine asks. Okay, cool. Yep. You're all you're only going to say hi to Christine. I love the idea that Carl appears and then barks at the wolves and the wolves bark at Carl for like five seconds and you all have to <laughs> really embarrassingly apologize for them. Like, she's like, oh no, they're good. They're good dogs. She's gonna, <laughs> they just get excited to meet new people. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. I'm done with that. What do you want? All right. You're all set. Cool. Yeah. So. Uh, you see where the, the wolves are clearly... Where's the tentacle creature? They're they're going after that tentacle creature. He's invisible, but you <laughs> see him, right? Because you can see everything. I can see him. I got true sight. W can you point him out just so we all know really quick? Right over there. He points in like a vague direction with his little tiny paw. <laughs> okay. Oh, God, so, that's cute. That's, uh, that's, you're adorable, by the way. <laughs> Carl, you're the fucking best. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cast a fireball and I want you to guide my hand and point it to the spot that's like 19 feet above that uh, Murloc guy's head. Okay. So this is a Carl. This is, uh, well, you've, you can't cast fireball till your next turn. Okay, Carl, I'm just w telling you that that's what I eventually would like to do. Right. But I'm trying to think what I should roll for Carl because Carl's got to do a fireball spell, essentially. He's got to aim your hand. He just has to point my hand in a direction that he can see. Just tape Carl to your arm. Well, not just in a direction that he can see. He needs to point it exactly 19 feet above his head. Well, ballpark. Yeah. Pretty close. <laughs> close would be ideal, but like if he misses by a little bit and it's a little bit low, it probably doesn't matter. I'm going to roll a straight intelligence saving throw. So he, he climbs onto your arm. Right, he wraps himself Carl around your arm. Carl doesn't need to do this yet because it's not even my turn, right? Oh, so I'm well, like, what the fuck do you want me to do then? No, so what I would like you to do actually right now, I'm, I was that was just me telling you like eventually what we'll be doing together. I, I only do one thing at a time generally just in my life. So wh what you do now, because you get to do one thing at a time in your life generally too? Yep. Yeah, well, yeah it's like, uh, that's how it works. So uh, can you just go over and like, uh, stab the uh, the Murloc guy in, in, in the face with your horn. Yep. Not the face because that's where your fireball will be. Can you stab him in the dick with your horn? You yeah. Stab him in the dick and then you're going to like calculate so that you don't hit me? I'm going to make sure I don't hit you, yeah. Can I just say? I don't have a lot of faith. Here, here's, what, <laughs> here's what we're going to do. You do the stab, but then like come back here so you're out of oh, the No, stay, stay there, there so, so we can all see him. him. That's an important part, too. Yeah, stay stuck. Stay stuck. Everybody <laughs> makes a good point. Also, it's more fun when Carl dies. Like, let's be honest. I, I, Carl, do, do I ever steer you wrong? I'm not going to, like, hit you with a fireball. <laughs> pretty much pretty much nothing but steal me wrong. Hey, it's, it's it's point. Can you just go do it, yep. please? Oh, I'm going. I'm going. All right. He is going to attack Murloc. 
and he his little horn Ow. pings off of this off of nothing right in the middle <laughs> and he sort of goes like oh he had magic armor ow ow oh, he had magic yeah, armor actually, on. <laughs> that's funny i actually knew that we knew <laughs> oh. we all knew he had the magic armor i thought yeah Okay, I get it. Can Carl tell us anything about the magic armor or no? Carl, just stay stay close to the guy that you can see. Stay like kind of close so we know where he is. Oh no, I'm right next to him. It just hurts. Yeah, perfect. Just be yeah. on his foot so we can see him. Hmm? But is there like can you tell us anything about the magic armor or no? Oh, I'm sorry. Would you like a little oh, let me just look up in my little spell book here. What spells <laughs> fucking Murloc Gnomes though? Excuse me, Miss Murloc Gnomes. Do you mind telling me what spells you No. I don't think he's gonna tell me. I fucking. think the next time you summon Carl, you have to be at a fucking spa day for him. <laughs> yeah, we'll do a spa day. I'm I'm into that. that that's valid. Um, what what did it feel like when you hit the shield though? The magic shield was it like you bounced? Painful. It hurt. Was it like a wall, like a metal wall, or like a bouncy situation? Oh it was God. not a bouncy. It was a hurt. All right, Bridget. Aye. Okay. So I would like to move straight toward him. And stay on his west side so that Snedrick still has a clean view of him. But I would like to be within touching distance, if possible. Oh, uh, you can't see him, so you don't know where touching distance is. Can we have Carl say stop when Bridget gets within touching distance? <laughs> Carl, can you do that? Warmer, colder, colder. Yeah. Warmer. Just pee on his foot. Carl? I'm not talking to you. You heard my horn. <laughs> wow. Carl. Bridget, can you ask Carl? Peeing on his foot would have been the way to go, though. Because that'll really smell. Yeah, we'll all smell that. Pee on legs <laughs> a bonus action, right? Yeah, you, you can make your inflict wounds. You just make it with disadvantage. I have to touch him. <laughs> oh, I thought you were about to say, yeah, you can pee on somebody's leg anytime you want at the end of the turn. <laughs> <laughs> He's a free action. <laughs> it's the freest action. You guys just haven't been doing that this whole time. But yes, you can. Pooping is not. Pooping takes time. It actually does not say someone I can see. It says someone I can reach. Exactly. So I'm going to run over to Carl. I'm not going to go to where he was. I'm going to go to where Carl is currently. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to... Wave her arms Wave around. my arms around. <laughs> yeah, and cast. So you do not need to know exactly where he is to attack him. You just make that attack with disadvantage. Okay, that's fair. Okay. Yeah, so you could just be like, I know he's there-ish. Okay. Inflict wounds. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Fuck, that sucks. So I, I, why do I, would I even do another? Yeah, no, that will not hit. <laughs> that will not hit. <laughs> okay, as my bonus action, my fucking sad little keg is going to go over there. <laughs> <laughs> Just vaguely squirt beer somewhere. <laughs> and dribble beer. <laughs> well, as you say, but if it hits him, then we'll be able to see where he is. We'll be able to I, see the oh, beer. Oh, this could help. Oh, spiritual weapon. It's just gonna get a like a cat marking its territory. That's 15 to hit. Nope. Balls. Ah. Will not hit. What about the swarm of the berries? That's on his turn. So he's gonna make a dexterity saving throw? While he's doing that, I'm gonna give Carl a nice pat on the head. Pats are a free action. Nice. <laughs> Carl, we're being nice to you, right? But only for Bridget. I got you, boy. Maybe you talk to your gods, see if your gods are hiring, right? One of them's like a big fish. I love fish. Can you even work for gods? I thought you were a demon. Carl, I will make you wait in the truck. <laughs> we have a truck? I have a truck. <gasps> I want a truck. A fire truck? I have a dragon truck. Uh, what does he need to hit? Uh, 15? Uh, yes, he needs to uh, 14. He will fail then. Yeah. All right. Oh, here we go. Hey, come on, fairies. Ten. 10 damage. All right. I, I. He is going to. So you can't see him, but you hear a crackling and he just says, I'll say this. After all of this back and forth, I find your resistance shocking. And oh, fuck. I feel like he's going to do some electricity thing. Carl. <laughs> Carl's dead. We're going to get. Carl. Carl is so dead. We're going to get a falcon. Carl, Dave, Snedrick, and. I'm going to assume you didn't summon the wolves right next to you, right? They come out of my ass. They come out of your... Okay, so all the wolves then. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, adjacent, I would say. <laughs> so you are all going to make a... Sorry. Me? Uh, no, not you, Bridget. So he's throwing like uh, Emperor Palpatine lightning? Exactly. In all directions? Because we're in no. like... 100 feet long and 5 feet wide. Ooh. We're not all in a line. 
No, that's that's why he's. I'm thinking five feet wide. He could probably only get you guys in a group. Probably just me and Snedrick, right? Well, no, the wolves are right next to him because yeah. they came out of his ass. They haven't had time to like disperse about the room yet. Yeah, but Carl's like right underneath him, right? Carl's probably going to. Carl's right us. there. Yeah, Carl's Carl's getting the full brunt of it. No, no, no Carl's right. down low off the side. Yeah, a little bit. he's below his hands. Yeah, he's dick level. He's below hands for sure. Wait, if he's not getting me, I'm right next to Carl. Oh, She's yeah, you're patting right. patting Carl on the head. I'm right yeah. next to Carl. Oh, so yeah, you're definitely going to take this as well. Okay. Great clarification there, Anna. Yeah, it's a, it's a five foot uh. wide line. <laughs> so everybody make a dexterity saving throw for me. DC, I will tell you, build a little tension here. DC is 15. At 16. Nice. <laughs> so wait, with my wolves, I'm just doing straight D20s, right? Yeah. I'm very slowly rolling. I don't have to roll, correct? Yeah, you do not have to roll. What happens if we don't save here? You get shocked. I uh, will tell you. That's a fucking 29er. So I've got, uh, I saved and one of my wolves did. The other two did not. I rolled a natty. Dave, you rolled a two. You rolled a two, my, my guy. Who rolled a 29? What was that? That was me. That was my me rolling my three. Damn 20s. it. I thought I had a 29 somehow. <laughs> yeah, no, you rolled a two. Sense. <laughs> I got to the point where I was just like, Oh man, Heath, you know, we are making a podcast, my guy. You can't just you can't just lie about the numbers. <laughs> There's a 29 on the screen. 29 on the dice is what I rolled. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, 8d6 damage. Oof. 32 damage. Oh. Unless you saved, in which case it is 16. Oof. I'm looking rough. Rough. Yeah. I don't know how much, how many hit points my wolves have. They have 11. Okay. So they're all dead. So the wolves show up and they like shake hands with Carl and then boosh, they're just gone in a flash. So is Carl. And you know what that means, Dave? Oh, fuck. D10,000, right? D10,000. I'm knocked out. I can't do it. <laughs> oh. I could do it for you if you'd like. I wouldn't be able, how, that doesn't even make sense. I'm, I'm, I don't think this consequence can happen because I'm already... <laughs> oh, it can happen. <laughs> ...removed. You'd be a knocked out falcon. The area. Roll a D10,000 for me. You might get something good. Never know. All right. Random number generator 10,000. Here we go. 3,092. 3,092. 3,092. You get a second robe of bread. <laughs> I forgot I was going to do the bread, bread cake. <laughs> bread pudding. The next door, opened by you, Dave, leads to tomorrow, but not back. What? So I would then be in the future by a day from everybody else mm -hmm. forever. But not back. Well, we would just not have you for a day. But then by the time you got to tomorrow, it would be tomorrow for me the next no, day. No, you would get day. to where we were already. Yeah. You travel through time. We're, we're going to be in tomorrow regardless. Dude. Go back out the throne door to where we won. What? <laughs> what? Well, he, he's unconscious right now. Oh. But yeah. <laughs> Tell us how we did. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Just walk out that door to where we won. Wait, oh. can everybody walk through the door with me? No, 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 no. no, no but just you, walk but you don't have to close it behind you. And the story will follow you and then we'll be wherever we are in the, are in the future. Mm -hmm. So everybody would time travel with me when I do it. No, you'll time travel and then we'll just be whoever we are in the future. Oh, so who's still alive? I'm full health. I'm alive. Great. Here's the bad news, though. He does that big lightning blast, kills all the wolves, knocks out Dave, knocks out all those people. He waves his hands again to conjure a second spell. Oh, and fuck. as he ranges his hands to deliver that second spell, he is struck in the face by something small and yellow. The yellow blur zips around his face, pecking at him and twittering madly. And as your eyes focus, for those of you that are conscious, you realize it's Cockteroo, the head of the flying library. But cheap as she might, eventually Murloc catches her with a slap from his long gray hand and she hits the ground hard a few feet away. Murloc laughs as he conjures fire between his hands and says, What on earth did you think you were doing? You plan to defeat a master mind flayer with a few pecks and some cheeping? And Cockteroo, who is near unconscious, says in her tiny, tiny bird voice, I wasn't trying to defeat you, Murloc. I was calling 
the backup. And then you hear the flutter of wings. Oh. But they're not wings. They're pages. And before Murloc Gnomes can react, thousands of books pour through the windows and descend on Murloc Gnomes, thick spines pounding into his face and stomach like a never-ending wave of punches. And the glow that has been keeping everyone else in this courtroom, guards and your father and Nitin, frozen to the floor, fades as he takes hit after hit after hit. And Claw, your sister rises to her feet, glowing with a powerful magic. Your father draws his staff and starts towards Murloc, but both are pushed out of the way by the chicken who runs the kitchen, wielding two incredibly yeah. large cleavers. And she says, oh, buk, buk. yeah. Oh, Murloc, you done clucked up now. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> and as guards and courtiers and warriors and visitors and papa start to close in, Murloc's eyes go wide with panic. He swings his hand in a circle, looks at you all and says, this isn't over. The queen has other allies that can protect me. And then behind him, a portal opens. He steps backwards and for just a second, you see a rain swept hill and the dark and foreboding castle that sits upon it. The portal closes, and Murloc Gnomes and the Sunstone are gone. Was that a deus ex bach bach enough? Fantastic! <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry I've used bach bach twice. <laughs> no, it works because you used it twice. It's fantastic. <laughs> Because you go bok bok, not bok. Mine flayus ex bok. No, again, yours is always better. Fuck. I'm on fire today. The rest of the day is a blur. Guards search the castle in vain for Murloc. Healers of the court tend to the combatants' wounds, but generally the entire castle is in chaos as spellcasters from around the city work with Nitten to magically bolster the plane of air until the sunstone can be retrieved from wherever Murloc took it. That is. Everyone except for you, Dave, because even half conscious through your haze as you fell asleep, you recognized the castle you saw in that <gasps> portal. However brief a flash you got of it, and you know exactly where it is. Murloc Gnomes has escaped to Castle Darkmoor. Yeah! I've been reading. Noah got me the uh, the the original Dungeons and Dragons manual, which I value more than anything. But I've actually only read a PDF of it before, and I was like, I want to go back and reread it. And it's so fucking amazing because he can't write very well, so he gets stuck on this metaphor of the log for I'm gonna say eleven pages, where he's like, <laughs> so <laughs> so like a difficulty roll is like if you want to jump over a log, but then. If it's harder, it's like a bigger log. And if it's less hard, it's a smaller log. And if it's in between the less hard and the medium hard, it would be a medium, a medium log. log. Oh, yeah. it's, for so, it's beautiful. <laughs> Fucking beautiful. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2021. All rights reserved.